गुड मॉर्निंग दोस्तों आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक टू यू टूडे ऑन द फ्रेंच इलेक्शन फ्रेंच इलेक्शन वॉज ए स्नैप इलेक्शन ऑर्डर बाई प्रेजिडेंट मैक्रोन टू गिव स्टेबिलिटी टू द कंट्री बिफोर आई गो फर्दर मस्ट टेल यू दैट द फ्रेंच इलेक्शन बेसिकली is the most important election as far as the europe is concerned because france is the only nation out of the european nations that maintains an independent nuclear deterrent and they follow an independent policy they also have the largest muslim minority in the sub in the continent and their muslim minority is almost 10% and they haven't integrated with the french ethos and culture then there is the leftist parties these are the people who believe in extremism leftism socialism a conglomeration of things they have a greater representation among the muslims and the blacks etc but they have never been in power in france after 1945 and then we have got the centrists the centrists are those people who are in the middle path and they are the ones which are represented by president macron and now we have got the third party that is the far right which is led by marine le pen and this is a very important part because the substantial number of french people who believe that france must go back to its roots curtail islam and somehow see to it that christian values are restored that is the far right now in France is a peculiar sort of election, and they have it in two tiers. In the first tier, of course, uh, Marine Le Pen and the uh, far right were the winners. They were number number one, number two were the centrists, and third position was occupied by the leftists. But as I told you, they have a two-tier system. A second election took place under the conditions, and in that, uh, the situation reversed. the leftists won the maximum seats almost 182 followed by the centrists they had about 165 and marine le pen and her far right came third at 140 odd seats so none of the parties had a majority to form a government in the french parliament now that is a very very peculiar situation It doesn't happen but in france is very common I still have not understood how the French adopted this system of uh, election because it's very weird, and it's likely to screw up everything. So as it stands now, the maximum number of seats—I mean, I mean the voting percentage—the maximum is for the far right. They have 41% of the vote, but yet they have number three as far as the seats are concerned. There are only 140 odd seats. So the question is, what is going to happen in France? the leftists you know they've never been power in since 1945 in france so obviously this time they were thinking that we are going to win and we we'll form the government and when they found that they got only about 180 seats they went berserk and berserk means they started burning the uh, french uh, buildings committing arson committing anything else writing and this is a sign which is a dangerous sign that you don't accept the election results so the french leftists it appears did not accept the results that is the only inference one can draw from the vices of the writing and the arson and burning of public property which was done so where does france go forward now france as it is economically is not strong now it's lost its colonies and it may have nuclear deterrent but that's about all the french are not dominating the scene economically and they are living on spending getting money from countries like india by selling the rafel but that's about all i mean how france going to survive and with this sort of situation in france where there is a partisan fighting going on all over how is going to work out i'm a little surprised that uh, marie le pen despite winning 40% of the popular vote stood number 3 i think uh, this needs to be investigated but obviously it's possible that in some countries they won an overwhelming majority and others they just scraped through so that's a possibility 
and I think Marie and Le Pen must be very disillusioned after this performance of the far right. Now, as far as the leftists are concerned, they are very clear. They say we are going to uh, recognize the Philistine state and we are going to put sanctions or something on Israel and we are going to put more taxes on the rich so that they can pay for the poor. I mean, these are old socialistic policies which we all know have failed. They tried it in Russia with communism and the net result, you know what's happened. Communism, which is an extreme form of socialism, collapsed like a pack of cards in Russia and Russia broke up into 18 states. A very sad thing. I think the French should be very careful of handing over power to the leftists. But the question is, if the leftists are the biggest majority, they have the right to form the government and they might get some outside support from the centrists. If they do that, France is going to be in serious problem. It will reverse all the policy which Macron has been following since now. And what's going to happen next? I really don't know. Because such a situation in France, which is a dominant power in the European continent, doesn't know what's going to happen. Macron was supporting the Ukraine war. And now the leftists are not going to support the Ukraine war. That's what I understand. And neither is far right. The net support of this uh, Ukraine war by the French is affecting the French economy. They're becoming more and more dependent on China and maybe to an extent on India. So what is going to happen in France? I don't know. Macron is going to be in serious problem. He may still try to form the government with the far right. But then the far right would like their pound of flesh. So there's no easy solutions I find. I don't think they would like to form a party with the leftists because the leftists are totally extreme. They would like the Ukraine war to be finished. They would like Philistine to be recognized as an independent country. There are so many things, you know, which are the French don't believe. I mean, the French government has so far not believed in or followed. So what is going to happen next? It's a very dangerous situation. Well, gentlemen, uh, this is a brief video on the, what's happened in France. We must remember that after 1945, France was a totally defeated nation. It was occupied by Germany for a couple of years and the French didn't know what was happening. In 1945, the government was restored back and the French wanted to reclaim their colonies in Indochina and other places. They failed. They failed even to hold on to Algeria and they were suddenly benefit of the colonies and they didn't know what to do. There was total instability. Some form of stability was brought in by General de Gaulle for about seven years, but de Gaulle left and went away, and uh, there's been no stability in France after that. The French presidents have come and gone, but they haven't been able to restore the old glory of France, and that is a fact. And now this election which has come has shown up a result which is totally bizarre. We don't know what's going to happen. The French are I think people must be wondering and you must be wondering what's wrong with the leftists that they, though winning the maximum number of seats, go around on a fighting and arson spree. This is something which is very dangerous uh, in the Western world. You may remember when Donald Trump lost the election in uh, uh, the United States, uh, the Capitol Hill was occupied by the demonstrators who didn't uh, accept the results. And we had a very dangerous situation here by when uh, Rahul Gandhi had made an announcement that, well, in case the results are not what we want, we are going to agitate. So in case by chance the BJP had won a big majority, there was a good chance that the Congress party would have started similar sort of uh, mayhem and uh, arson in India. Thankfully, they won about 100 seats, so they're quiet now. But democracy as it stands, I think now it's on the last legs. People will be looking forward to stability and some form of order and that was the reason you know fascism came up early in the 20th century in Europe when Spain, Italy and Germany and the Eastern European countries including Oslo all came under the sway of fascism. So I hope this doesn't happen now but uh, the portents are very obvious. The people would be really fed up of the instability which is now generated in France and we'll have to watch and see what happens. 
Uh, well, gentlemen, I think I'll close now. I don't have anything more to add to this. All I can say is that the French president has a big and onerous responsibility. He's the man who's got to appoint the prime minister. And Macron, I don't think he's all that dynamic. I mean, frankly, he was talking a lot of BS, you know, when he said that Russia should not be allowed to win in Ukraine. Look at his statements. Then he made a statement that the French are going to intervene in Ukraine. Soldiers should go and fight there. I mean, and forgotten completely that Napoleon had to run away like a jackal from Russia. I mean, it's an all-day retreat and all that, but the fact is he was defeated. And that was the end of the Napoleonic era. So he never recovered after that. So the French should be very careful to get involved in Ukraine or something like that. The leftists won't allow it. So if the centrists form a government with the leftists, they won't know what to do. And if they form a government with the far right, the far right is going to ask for sanctions on the Islamics and other things and greater stress on Christianity and greater stress on France. They're not too enamored of NATO. They don't want to be with NATO. So we'll have to wait and see. Gentlemen, France is at the crossroads and I think Macron has a very onerous responsibility to see that he can lead the country forward. Gentlemen, if you like this video, please share it with your friends. Uh, I look forward to interacting more with you. Please subscribe to my channel, like it, discuss it, and give your comment here. In the meanwhile, I'll close now and say goodbye. Take care and God bless.